You see, here is the one. And of course I can say that if you can read that, you need to go to an eye doctor. Because <laughs> it means. But the point that is made are the 25 major aggressions by the West against the Muslim world. My friend Hassan Hanafi was touching it. The frustration and the anger. And not everybody has the same language at their disposal. Now, I'm not going to comment on that. There's a lot of history behind it. I could perhaps say one word if you look at 1898, Omdurman in Sudan. You have a very, very basic point about what happens in Sudan today. Unfortunately, you have to go back in history. And there is an iron law here. The perpetrator has very short-term memory. As a matter of fact, often suffers from amnesia. The victim never forgets. And then the victim brings up things that the perpetrator doesn't even know about. Maybe the victim sounds fundamentalist and fanatic because it doesn't relate to anything in the perpetrator's mind. Now, what does this have to do with 9-11? It has to do with 1945 in Saudi Arabia. And it has to do with 1916-17-18. Bin Laden said, you are now suffering the humiliation that we suffered more than 80 years ago. So the minimum one can then do, you know, would be to take that well, 2001 minus 80, you get 1921, but he said more than. So it could be four or five years more. And where do you come? You come to the Sykes-Picot treason. You come to the Balfour Declaration. You come to the capitulation of the Ottoman Empire and the invasion and occupation of Istanbul. Are we supposed to believe that such events pass unnoticed? Are they forgotten? Or could it be they leave traces? So I give you my interpretation on 9-11 for what it is worth. It was the extrajudicial execution of two buildings. The third one, I'm 98% sure, would have been CIA in Langley, Virginia or buildings for having sinned against Islam. This is Wahhabism. It's a branch of the Sunni branch of Islam. Very pure, not aggressive. But a good life is the life as lived at the time of Muhammad. There should be no two religions in this land. And this land is the promised land of the chosen people. It was almost a true copy of Puritan creed. The Puritan creed that was sailing on the Mayflower and the other birds from the 1620 on and became the Plymouth Rock, the rock stone of the US. They left before the Enlightenment and they brought with them acts of faith that many would identify as maybe evil. I repeat, it was the extrajudicial execution of buildings. It was not an invasion. Since you cannot execute buildings more than once, and it doesn't matter whether they resurrect or not, the point has been made. There was no further attack. For Bush to cash that in as confirming his approach, to my mind, was one more proof of a very limited understand. Now how do I come to that conclusion? By talking with them. I have met people who identify very closely with Al-Qaeda. And I sit down with them and I ask them, how does the world look where you would like to live? And I listen. And what do they say? It's a world with respect for Islam. I'm not asking the world to convert to Islam, we are asking for respect. And I say, but how can we respect the way you treat women? And they say, look, what is happening to women is not Quranic. We are aware of it, there is a process. Look at Southern Philippines, look at Indonesia, look at Turkey. Look at Islamic women with all the self-confidence 
dignity that you can ask for. There is a process. But they add, I can tell you one thing. We are not going to be told this by Western feminists. And we are not going to be told it by Americans. And particularly not by American feminists. Now, you may like or dislike that statement, it is just a debating quote. And from this point on, I now turn to what to me are solutions. Just a second, I think I made a mistake again. Yeah, and maybe my oral message will be more clear. I'm giving you now a very brief summary of a talk that I gave something called a place in England, because the meeting was secret. There are 54 counter-terrorism experts from the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Department of Defense, and the Department of International Development. It's actually called the Foreign Office, or Foreign and Commonwealth Office. So there are 54 in front of me. And the approach I had taken was to compare three attacks, 9-11, 2001, 0707, London, 2005, Onse Emme, the 11th of March, 2004, in Madrid. Atrocious attacks. They should never have happened. The Muslim world, or those who did it, should have approached it non-violently. I understand their frustration. And now to go straight to the point. You had three different tests of the West. It was flanked by Bush, flanked by Blair, and Zapatero, the Spanish Premier, passed it briefly. Zapatero in Spanish means shoemaker. And I think he had a very keen sense of what the foot was about. So I go straight to the concrete, the process, what he did. He put the troops out of Iraq. We are killing Muslims, we are killing Arabs. This can be solved through negotiation, whatever the problem is. And let me add one thing. If the West, and particularly the US, had taken Saddam Hussein's four peace proposals of February 2001 on his word, and said, look, it's not that we trust you immensely, but here you have four points. That's it. The response by Pentagon was sealed in by that. These four proposals were very, very important. They were only revealed by the New York Times seven months later, a little bit too 